Good morning. Well, you're getting a double dose of Yakko this week because I've got a new bike. It's not mine for very long, but I'm quite excited. It's like the Rise, but softer, more gentle. It is the Orbea Kemen. show you it properly later. Once I've ridden it a while, there's no point in reviewing a bike if you don't know it. So uh, I've got this for around a month again, same sort of deal, hopefully maybe a little longer. Um, it did actually take two weeks to arrive once it had been delivered. So it's a little story, it's not very exciting. Well my absolute first impressions, having ridden it now about three kilometres, is that it's extremely powerful, um, good and bad. It's, uh, it's fantastic if you really get stuck. I've only got it on level one and I've used the Shimano Steps app to actually reduce the uh, power levels in the first two levels, it's got three levels of power. Uh, eco, trail and boost. The basic settings as they came were all, I think by the looks of it, maxed out for their level. So um, I've got it in the eco setting now, and it's actually still too powerful, even though I actually uh, reduced it. Um, it's, it feels as though um, I'm maybe in a, a medium setting. Um, and I think you'd really want to have a setting which felt like it was just maybe, maybe just maybe helping you. I think this is too much, but uh, let's just see. We've got a bit of a hill coming here, not much of one probably something like uh, 5% so uh, just pop it up to trail <laughs> that's quite a, that's quite a lot of I'm not putting in a lot of effort here and it's got the same cadence and uh, power uh, sensors as the rise has so you will only get out what you put in but you can adjust those as well My plans for this bike are to use it for long distance trekking. So I need to, uh, I need to be able to use it without the motor at all. Uh, I have tried that just on the main road there and uh, I couldn't tell. It runs really well uh, on the road. I was quite surprised you and we haven't tried boost yet. I think we're already fairly close to 25 kilometers an hour anyway. Rowing boost. So I didn't notice a big surge in power there. I think I'm, yeah, I'm still in boost, but uh, yeah, I'm in a, I'm in a, the second smallest cog on the cassette, if that makes sense. And I'm going up a hill. So yeah, it is pretty powerful. We'll do a bit more testing of that later. Now it's a really steep hill. I remember this it goes between seven and 9%. I haven't changed gear. I've just leant forward a bit to push a bit harder. And we're, we're flying up this to be honest it's quite a nasty hill I feel like changing down just because I should this is the steepest bit of road that we have locally I'm about midway up the cassette but we're not gonna go up there we're gonna go along here that was extremely easy I'm a little bit out of puff so we're now on the sort of trails that I'm intending to take the Kemen along it's a lovely it's a lovely uh, track to follow So the Kemen 10 comes with these uh, Schwalbe G1 gravel tyre, I believe they're gravel tyres. Um, they look pretty good for an all-rounder tyre. If you go for the Kemen 10 SUV, it comes with uh, full-blown mountain bike tyres. Um, we'll see how these go. Well, first impressions of the tyres are good. On the road, it felt a little bit uh, on the corners it felt a little bit unsure I think it's more that I'm not used to uh, wider softer tires 
uh, on tarmac. So I suspect that's just something to get used to rather than something that's actually an issue. Because out here, they feel very, very secure. It's, I think, pretty perfect terrain for It came them. almost complete in the box. The box is truly gigantic. Uh, it w there's no way can you fit it in a normal car. So before you can actually take it home, you need to take it out of the box. Uh, I'm still in eco mode, by the way. I'm going to leave it there. I'll tell you if I change it. I think we're going off-road now. So I'm going to... Before we do that, I'm going to put it in up a level. Oh, this Kemen 10 comes with a dropper post. Whoop, there it is. Let's just bring it up a little bit. It hasn't got the same travel as the Rise, but it was quite a surprise to have it in the first place. And rather, rather pleasant surprise. Now, I must remind myself, don't look down. Look up. There we go. Oh, hello, dropper post just dropped and I didn't mean it to. actually ridden the rise for a long time I've still got it I haven't taken it back yet but I've been, uh, been kind of waiting on this one to arrive Ooh, a bit of a tight turn oh, that was very easy very very easy indeed now these are sort of embedded stones they've been driven over so often they've embedded themselves into the mud it's actually really rough I've taken the gain along here with the gravel tires on and it's a real bone shaker of a ride so this is essentially a hardtail. We've got air suspension on the front. Yes. It's perfect for this. The mud guards are fitted very, very close to the wheels. Looks really nice, but uh, I am hearing stones being picked up and thrown in there a lot. I doubt it makes any difference. It's a bit of noise, but I thought I'd report it. Huddle. Rabbit! This is a stunning ride. Absolutely loving it. I think it's always lovely to try something new. I've got to thank Orbea for another rabbit for giving me the opportunity. I, I still don't really know why they're doing it. I know there's been a lot of, well, I suppose there's been a few sales, um, at least people telling me that they're buying one after uh, uh, the reviews that I've done. It's actually quite good in total. Um, there's 34 or bear gains people have told me they bought one because of the review and it's five or bear rises but i don't think or bear needs any help to sell either of those models and i don't know about the kemen it's uh it looks like a a sort of commuter city bike um but they do push it as a tracking bike and it does have you know these huge wide handlebars like I said, the same as the Rise. And it's got a uh, four pot, four pot, four piston uh, front hydraulic brakes. It's got a dropper seat post. I mean, you could use the dropper seat post just to get on and off more easily when you've got the bike fully laden with, I don't know, maybe a child or all your shopping. But uh, I'm just going to use it for off-road. I'm sorry I'm wittering. I'm really enjoying it. I do chat more when I'm enjoying myself. So if you're ever in my company, I'll go silent. It's not good. <laughs> Hello, doggy. Being chased by a dog. <laughs> I don't know if you saw it. It was a little uh, pit bull cross. I think I could have outrun it if I needed to, but uh, it was just seeing me off the property. A little eye patch, I bet it was called Patch. Or whatever that is in Catalan. Just been riding along for the last few kilometres without, without the power on. You can tell the difference. But it's, uh, it's very easy. It rolls nicely. I suppose it's these tyres again. Without it being too aggressive, they roll better. But it's a very, very, uh, it's a nice bike to ride. Feels comfortable so far. I've not changed the, the stock saddle, which is a, one of them. If you just touch on the power. 
yeah, it just, it's more than a breeze on your back. Even in a, a toned down eco. Yeah, I can feel the speed picking up as well. My pedaling's got faster. It actually makes it a, a, a more pleasurable experience. You know, I don't feel that I'm pedaling any less firmly. I'm still putting in the same power as when it was off. It's just my speed's gone up. So, what am I riding? I'm riding this. It's got lots of things which a road, a roadie would issue. Things like it's got uh, a built-in carrier rack. It's got mud guards. It's got a daytime running light just here. It comes with this massive, great, powerful design headlight too, which has um, headlight and dipped functions, which you control with this button right here. And it's got a permanently on light at the back as well. It's got, uh, I think, I can't remember, I think it's 12 speed. Let's count. One, two, Nine, three, ten, eleven. Eleven speed. Uh, I think it's a eleven to fifty cassette at the back, and I can't remember if it's a thirty-two or a thirty-four tooth uh, chain ring. Uh, these are my pedals again. It does actually come with pedals in the box, but I'd already fitted mine by the time I found those. You know what it's like to get excited, and it's also now covered in dust. The other thing, weight weenies all hate. They're sensible. It's just got a bike stand. I haven't had a bike with a stand for years. I don't think I've ever had a bike with a stand. Maybe when I was a kid. No, we used to lay them down. It is quite sensible. Look at these, the welds. What welds? It's like carbon fiber. It really is. There's absolutely nothing, no welding seam there at all. And back here's the same, look at this. That's an incredible job they've done. Absolutely beautiful. The whole thing, actually, it's a very good looking bike. So far, it's been fantastic on these sorts of roads. I like it. You do actually feel the difference between this and the Rise. The full suspension on the Rise is, uh, it means you can just glide. You glide over these rough surfaces. And with this one, you definitely are aware that the bumps are being taken out, but when you hit a bigger hole uh, at the back, the back wheel, you really feel that. You actually get sort of a little bit popped up in the air, but um, that's just hardtails, I guess. It's tiny and everyone would want to do something different anyway, but this has the same really excellent little control unit here. Now, it's really good. It's really minimalist. It doesn't dis distract from the ride, detract from the ride. You're not looking at it, looking at your numbers all the time, which you really can't afford to do on a mountain bike because you're going to crash. You need to look where you're going. But uh, I thought that the Kemen, Kemen, being a sort of a commuter bike, people are going to want to know at least what their speed is. And I believe that the Kemen always came with a little display, a little display on the front here, just for basic information. You know, an odometer, speedometer, uh, and it doesn't. And it, but it does come with pedals and reflectors and a kickstand and mudguards and front and rear 
daytime running lights and a dirty great headlight. But it doesn't come with a little thing to say whether you're breaking the speed limit in town. Little niggle. It's a bloody expensive bike not to have that. The Rise was a bloody expensive bike and I wouldn't have wanted it. But for this sort of do everything bike, I think it needs to have a little display. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up the pretty hideous climb at the far side of this bank and see what it's got in the tank. You'll notice I've uh, knocked off the speed. Too many, uh, too many crashes on that uh, on that rise. Not for confidence a bit. I just need to get out and do a bit more. we got we're on middle level let's leave it in mid level for a minute then what gear am i in about fourth so many gears it's not the the number i've got plenty enough on my gate no. oh. skidded a little there didn't we front wheel went Luckily I remembered that you can take your feet off the pedals. So they both came off there. Steady myself, carried on. Now I think this is where it gets really steep. So I'm gonna put it in boost. Change down a gear. Hell, let's change down two. You see this? I've never ridden up it. Oh, you're kidding. So I've changed the level of boost, so it's absolutely the maximum. Not only the maximum torque, but it comes on full as early as it possibly can with the least possible power input. And I've just got on something which I couldn't dream of going up before, and it was incredibly so easy. Let's push on again. You can hear it come on as I if I push harder on the pedals, the motor gives me more. It's an excellent system. So I'm still in boost. And it's just cut off because I'm obviously doing 25. It is hugely powerful. Bearing in mind, that was very steep. I wasn't in first gear and I'm really, really heavy. If you're anything other than very near the maximum weight limit for the bike, which I am, then uh, you're going to fly with this. It will give you confidence to go places that you wouldn't have gone before. Lovely, uh, definitely feeling the tyres not having quite the same grab as the as the uh, big knobbly rise tyres. Not surprising, of course. Quite aware of uh, both the front and rear. Just moving around a little bit. Saying that, it's a lot dustier now than when I came down with the rise as well. Whoop, front wheel there. Oh, that's about three inches of dust there. Oh no, this is. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I think if I was going to do a lot of this, I'd definitely change the tyres to uh, big knobbly ones. Up with a dropper post. Up with the power. <laughs> the way it all works, the whole package, it's all... Uh, very integrated. So, 
First ride, first impressions. Well, the ride's been about three hours, a little bit over. I don't know how far I've gone, uh, about three hours worth. It's, uh, it's a fantastic bike. That's my first impression. I probably, if I was gonna do more off-roading, I'd probably change the tires for something a bit nobblier. And if I was gonna do more road, I'd probably change them for something <laughs> a, bit, uh, a bit smoother. I'd also change the saddle, but that's normal, isn't it? This one, uh, this one is uncomfortable for me. It's a heck of a bike. It's a heck of a lot of bike. It does an awful lot of things very well. I think this is a, probably is better off really on, on road or on light gravel. It's what it's designed for, to be fair. I don't really necessarily feel you need the, uh, the big shocks on the front, but uh, it does make it more comfortable, of course. I like all of the extras because, of course, extras mean nothing on an e-bike because the, uh, the weight is unimportant because uh, you just turn the, the power up a little bit more to take account of any additional weight. So things like the kickstand are really useful. And I'm sure the mudguards will be. They're certainly going to keep the stone chips uh, off the bike. And uh, people in less arid countries, I'm sure they'll be extremely good for their original purpose. But uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a lovely bike to ride. I've got no idea what the range is going to be like. I'll have to do a lot of testing on that. But, so uh, I'll do a full review later. But until then, thanks for watching.